Welcome to the Perky Cal Radio Show on the WDRB Media Network. My guest today is Cornell Bunting, and he is very well accomplished. Let me go through a list of things he's doing right now. He's a published author, he is a public speaker, he's a mentor, and he's also a video game developer. I know my 11 year old is going to love this interview. Uh, can you hear me, Cornell? I can hear you, sir. Thank you. Excellent. I know, obviously, everyone loves video games. So the fact that I interview a video game developer today, my son's going to be very jealous. He's going to say, oh, watch the interview. What steps should I need to take? What classes should I take? What school should I go to? So no, he's super excited about interviewing you. So thank you for being on the show. Yes, sir. Thank you for having me. Uh, my pleasure. So we'll, we'll kind of take it in order. Uh, obviously, this is an entrepreneur show. We like to understand what you're doing, why you're doing it, what got you started, a success story, a struggle. But we'll start with all those different things when it comes to being a published author. What got you started being an author? It's name the books you have and kind of what's the kind of a summary of the books and you know, why should, people should pick them up. Well, uh, so for me, I started writing back in high school when I did plays for the school and I, I, I did a lot of drama. So I, I did some screenwriting. I fell in love with the writing and how I could think of a, a, a story and put it on paper and have a crowd of people enjoy it. Excellent. Um, yeah, I didn't. I didn't really uh, uh, pursue it after I school because I got distracted into you know other things in life. And um, you know, it, it wasn't until I was in jail in confinement uh, that I realized that I needed to pick up my calling and and, and get back in it. So I started back writing <clears throat> there and. You know, and that's a whole other story that, you know, might be for another show. But, um, you know, long story short, you know, all that stuff that I was accused of, I got acquitted and, um, you know, they expunged all that stuff. And when I got out, I decided, you know what, I wanted to put out one of my children's story that I, that I wrote, that I hid a grown-up story in the kid's story. And so... I, I wanted to challenge the readers to see if they could find the hidden story in that story. Okay. Uh, so I decided to put out Lion with No Roar. Um, I got picked up uh, by Aston Macaulay in London, um, Canary Walk. Um, and so they put it out. Um, and, you know, it's actually done fairly well so far. Um, and then I and then I put out uh, PD Like Drip Drop. Um, all my books, they have a message. Um, I've never written a book that doesn't have a message in it and, it, and it's beneficial for the kid. And so even my adult books that I write, even though none of those are published yet, but I just sent three manuscripts to a publisher, so I'm waiting back to hear uh, what that looks like. So, you know, right now people can go on my website, which is called uh to look on both those books. Okay. And the website, I'll just repeat it nice and slow, is Cornell, which is his first name, C-O-R-N-E-L-L, -L, last name Bunting, B-U-N-T-I-N-G.com. That's yeah. where you can find the books he's published for children. So if you yeah. can go back to each book, uh, tell us kind of the moral of the story for each book and what inspired you to write each one. Uh, so Lion With No Roar, uh, it, it, the inspiration from Lion With No Roar is myself, I, you know, like I said, I was in confinement, uh, and I am a Leo. Uh, you know, I consider myself a lion. I, I do, I am aggressive in, you know, pursuing what I feel uh, could be something beautiful, you know, and uh, for me, I'm not afraid of failure. Uh, so, you know, I have to try and, and see what comes of it, and then, you know, I have to learn whatever those lessons are. Okay. Um, so this story, uh, you know, is about uh, uh, a lion, uh, a king and a queen lion in this land of the Wundo that were very concerned with the, the well-being of the, the land because they were of old age and they didn't have a cup of their own. I see. And so, you know, after crying to the gods, the gods decided to bless them with a cub. Um, but because of their old age, the, the cub was born with no roar. Hmm. And uh, he needed to find himself, he needed to find who he was and what his calling was in order for that roar to come back. So the storyline brings a lot of challenge to uh, the cub, whose name is Bob Tavius. And Bob Tavius is uh, a longer version of my, my 11-year-old son nicknamed Bobsy. 
Um, so, you know, it was just one of those things because, you know, he got bullied a little bit in school and, you know, I wanted to highlight a little bit of that as well in the book mm-hmm. and just kind of help kids to understand, you know, how you can uh, defeat uh, bullying or, you know, someone that's doing you wrong without getting into a physical altercation. Um, and that's just me saying that because I don't really want to give away the story of the book. Sure. You know, instead of have people go and, and get the story and just kind of see what the story is. But uh, um, as I said earlier, you know, there is a story hidden in the story. So um, that's what Line with No Roar is. And then Petey Like Drip Drop is a shorter book, uh, a more simple book, a uh, younger crowd, like uh, from like a four to a seven year old okay. uh, type of book, uh, which a boy gator that is. That loves the water. He calls it drip drop, uh, but he doesn't know the difference. He doesn't know the difference of the water. He doesn't know when it's raining. He doesn't know what it's like. You know, when someone works out and they they generate that sweat on their face, he thinks it's all the same thing. So in this book, we just I just kind of differentiated and have him learn a few things as you go uh, on the little journey that I put him on in this book. Uh, like this stuff. Hmm. Very interesting. And have you got these books in stores, or do you sell just on your website? Or um, so, what's no, your no, 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 no. So they are, they are available everywhere online. Uh, there's Barnes & Noble, the book A Million, wow. Amazon. Good yeah, you. Anywhere, you, you, anywhere you put it in, it, it's there. Well, very no. good. Congratulations. What was what was that journey Thank like? You. Can you share a little bit about that um, as far as getting a, know, a published book into a, a was, store? It, it was a very long journey. Uh, like what were they written uh, you know, originally? I mean, how, how long ago were they written? Uh, so, Lion with No Roar was written back in 2014. 2014, okay. Um, so, I mean, it was written a while back. Uh, the, the thing is, that the practice takes a while. Sometimes when you're trying to get a traditional contract, uh, and sometimes you have to go the self-published route, and then maybe you'll get discovered from the, the self-published route. Okay. Um, you know, but it takes a lot of writing query letters and trying to help uh, uh, a literary, literary agent understand who you are as an individual and what the story is about and, and why you think they should be uh, giving it a chance, you know, in the bookshelf and stuff like that, you know, so. Sure. Well, congratulations that on the not, story. That's, that's quite thank, an achievement. Thank you. Thank you. Thank so you, you decided to self-publish the, that first book? Uh, so first, Lion with No Roar did get self-published because I had gotten, you know, I gotten rejected. I want to say maybe a little over two hundred times. Of course. And, um, you know, so I, I I put it out on that platform, and some opportunity came, you know, where I was able to go speak, you know, in Europe and in England, and um, from those speaking engagement, I was somewhat discovered. And um, uh, I had uh, the publisher in, in London send me a contract for the Lion and Our Workbook for them to republish it and put it out on their platform. Very good. But you said originally you had 200 people tell you no? Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> yeah, I had over 200 rejections. Wow. I, mean, I, I, you know, I had found a lot of different places, but, you know, a lot of them, either they didn't, they had enough. Um, author under their belt and they wasn't taken anymore or um, a lot of them were saying you know it wasn't along the line of what they do and then some were like you know they weren't really interested at this time you know and it was just you know different uh, responses like that sure so what kept you going I mean I think most people would just quit after the first 50 or first 100 rejections how did you keep what motivated you to keep pushing forward after so the, the, one, the one thing for me is I, I dreamt a lot of this. I this for me this is a dream that I dreamt and I decided I wanted to live this dream. I want to accomplish it. Hmm. And I knew it would be it would be hard and it would be discouraging. But because I believe in myself and I believe in what I do, you know, even if it takes five years or whatever, we believe get to the mass and the mass to get the message 
because a lot of times the masks don't get it the sure. first time or the second time around. Sure. Um, but you know, I believe in myself and I believe in what I do and I and I, I believe in God. So I trust God and you know, like I said, I had this dream that, you know, I will be you know, I'll have a lot of books I'll publish and I'll be giving away my books because that's my ultimate goal is to give away my books, you know, where I, I have enough sponsors to sponsor me and sponsor what I'm doing so I can give away my books to kids and educate them a little bit all over the world, you know? That's excellent. Well, very good. And it's, and it's a great story along with it, too, as far as the perseverance. And I think that's what a lot of entrepreneurs uh, are up against. And you may not hear about it on Shark Tank, how many times that they failed or how many times they were told no. They just hear the money. Right. Like, this comp- this person's worth so much money now, and they just consider it right. overnight success. And a lot of the behind right. the scenes I like this show to really, you know, just to really highlight is, you know, the mental toughness you had to have in order to continue to push forward to get this self-published. Then all of a sudden do some speaking engagements and then get another publisher to pick you up and then right. kind of a relaunch as well. So that, I think it's fantastic. Yeah, and, yeah. you know, the moral of the story yeah. is keep your head up. Keep pushing forward. Right. If you believe it yeah, enough yeah. and you have the persistence and the stamina, then anything's possible. Right. So right. this kind of brings yeah, me into the sec- second title that you have, which is public speaker, which sounds like being a public speaker got you the publisher for your first book. So it's right, 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 right. So it's interesting how yeah. they uh, are closely correlated. How did you get into public speaking? Did someone say, "Hey, you're inspiring. You should do your own circuit"? Or how did that happen for you? No, no. So um, in 2011, I won um, Elaine McGlasson award for Southwest Florida, and um, it was in hospitality. Um, back then, um, I was a bellman and ballet uh, individual, but I loved people, and I always wanted people to have a memorable stay, you know, and I always wanted to be that individual that when you meet me, even if you meet me for two minutes, you will remember me, right. because there's just there's just something about me. So, um, I think from that that had happened, you know, I had a, a big company in uh, Ohio. Uh, they they flew down to Florida and they said, hey, you know, we would love for you to come up and speak to, a, you know, a, a sales team. You know, a, a guy like, you know, with your type of personality and, and how you talk to kind of motivate them. And, and that was my first you know, gig, and I didn't even really take it serious, you know, but they, they put me up in a hotel, they flew me up there, they paid me some money, which was, it was beautiful, and, you know, <laughs> I went up there, and, you know, I talked to them, and, and I just kind of, I like using scenarios, and I like to make things simple sometimes for people to kind of understand it, you know? Right. Because we live in a world right now where there's these formulas that we need to understand and if we don't understand the formula then we're going to be going around in circles and we'd be failing and you know we we got to pay attention to the details to 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 apply yourself better the next time around so we don't repeat you know the the first mistake you did you know exactly yeah so, so it was it was it was that's how it started so the people in Ohio, and I ran into this situation. I'm curious if you had the same situation happen to you. The people in Ohio say, Cornell, what do you charge for a speaking engagement? Did you have a number in your head, or did you have to just make it up? Or how did you figure no, that part you out? Know, you know, I didn't even have a number in my head. You know, they said, dude, I'll about $3,600. I'm like, that's lovely, man. I'll just, I'll do that. So, okay, so they threw a number at you. They didn't ask you what you charged. They just said, here's what we're willing to pay you, and that was it. <laughs> no, that's yeah, they didn't ask what I charge, and I mean, if if they had asked what I charge, they'd have probably been lower than thirty six hundred because, like I said, I wasn't established or anything, you know. Right, so, that's great for your first you speaking know, engagement. Yeah. yeah, man. So it was beautiful, and uh, you know, from there, you know, I did a lot of uh, groups, you know, through my church, and uh, I go to Next Level Church, and then I did. Uh, uh, some libraries, some individuals, uh, you know, from different libraries that knew me and knew us, how I talked to people, said, you know, we would love for you to come out. And, you know, and, and a lot of them, like, especially organization, I wouldn't charge them a lot, you know, if you like $9,500, you know, and so, uh, and, and just to really get myself out there, you know, because sure. I know there's a lot of individuals, yeah, that, you know, that do it. And, you know, I'm not a, I'm not, I would say I'm like a, a perfect motivational speaker, you know. I love working on my craft, but I'm a very unpredictable person, and I, I feel like because I am so unpredictable, 
there's always more. And people always want more. Because I think once people figure out, okay, this person is like this, that's it, you know, they move on to something else. Mm-hmm. Makes sense. Well, that's yeah. great that you got that opportunity and it, it led to helping you get published. So, like I said, they all kind of work together hand in hand. Uh, right. And I guess help me understand, when you got hired by the Ohio company to do a sales training, did you have a sales mm-hmm. background or what made them feel like you were the best uh, speaker uh, or? <clears throat> well, I was in the field for over 16 years. So oh, I, see. I had the experience. You know, okay. I, I had all the experience and I had a lot of accomplishments. Um, you know, I was the top guy that was there. Because for me, <clears throat> it's never about the money. It was about the people and, and, and getting the people satisfied. What were you selling? You know, so, well, any, so first... Or was that irrelevant? Uh, it's the, sales or sales? You're right, yeah. It's just, uh, you know, golf products at one point because I was on the golf course, you know, as a cart attendant and stuff like that. And then, you know, in the uh, the Belmont field and, uh, you know, the, 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 the company, the hotel itself, you know, getting people to come there and stay, you know, and uh, me talking to people every now and then and say, hey, you know, you know I really think you should check out this experience because this would be something that would really leave uh, a, a, a nice memory on you, uh, you know, if you do it. And so because I had so many people coming, recommending to making sure that I was the guy that was um, their assistant, you know, um, helping them with that experience, it really put me over the top. And, uh, you know, a lot of people, and it was from that that I got, um, nominated for the award. I had a little over 14 um, big uh, comments. And uh, this award, they give out six a year, and it has over 520 um, participants that, that get uh, nominated for these. But they wow. only had six categories. So, I mean, if, to, to win one of those, it, the chances are very slim because I got nominated the year before. I never won, but you know, at least I was. They call you a star among stars, <laughs> uh, you know. So it was. It was just it, it, for me. It's more the experience, you sure. know, because I think someone that has the experience and have gone through um, those situations is more effective than someone that learns something on a computer mm-hmm. or, or none of that, because it's not as authentic as an individual that have gone through those situations. Sure. And I think for a lot of people, you know, with, with, with even this company, I think they wanted that. They didn't want, because they didn't want their, their sales rep to sound like they were trained from, you know, a script or, you know, some machine that tells them this is how you got to do it. You know, it's really how you go into something, you know, you because you want to love what you're doing. Mm-hmm. And and once you love what you're doing and you're comfortable with what you're doing, then everything else is easy for you uh, to accomplish that. And, you know, when you don't put, you know, you, you want the money, of course, to pay your bills and all this, but sure. when you don't make it that, it makes it more <clears throat> pleasing to the customer because now the customer feels like you really care about them as an individual and their experience, you know, in whatever that is that you're selling. Right. So, you know, for me, that was really how I was effective and they really liked that. And so, you know, it was one of those type of situations where it just worked and, and people liked the, the result that was coming from it, that, uh, you know, so I just continued doing that. I had some uh, uh, some group classes that I did where I had like uh, I, I would max it at twenty five people. Um, uh, you know, I did a class on facing the fears where I touched on you know ten top fears, and you know, it's just it was just one of those situations where um, it, everything that I touched on were things that was going on and people needed to hear those and it, it was just effective. Excellent. And they could relate to it I'm sure too. 
Yes, sir. Which is why it was so effective. I, I, yes, I never try to talk about something that I, I, I can't relate to. Right. Because then, you know, I'm making up stuff and I'm, I'm, I'm becomes, fumbling, you know. Becomes less authentic as well. Right. So we still have two more categories to cover. We're running a little bit short on time, so let's cover both these as, uh, as efficiently as we can. Uh, mentor. Yes. Uh, you said you're mentoring people. Who are you mentoring? How would someone hire you to be their mentor? Uh, so I do. Uh, so one of one of the the years, uh, like I said, I I go to this church where you know they find different leaders from. Um, different trainings and stuff like that, and uh, you know I've done some, I've done a few trainings, and um, so what I did was, you know, they they do like a workshop. Uh, you kind of talk about your experience, and because I my experience was so huge in certain areas, and like I said earlier, um, I was in jail for for ten months facing 32 years to life in prison um, and a fabricated story. And like I said, that, you know, that might be a story for another time. Sure. Um, but because of how how that all played out, um, people really wanted to, they wanted to listen to me and, you know, how I could stay sane, you know, from all that. And, you know, because I, I died in 2016, uh, that part of it was more fascinating to people because I had an out of body experience. And uh, so I was gone for 16 minutes. And, you know, it's a whole lot of stuff that, you know, kind of unfold that, that I needed to, to experience, uh, which is being written in the book I'm writing right now. That's called The Art Took a Break. Um, which hopefully will be out sometime next year, so people get a chance to to read it and kind of, you know, experience some of that as well that uh, that I went through. Um, but that's really what kind of set me um, apart somewhat and, and put me in that place where I was able to be mentor to individuals and help them to understand how important it is for them to. Uh, you know, take their health serious and, and understand how important they are um, in taking care of themselves and knowing that, you know, who is relying on them won't be able to benefit from them if they're not okay, you know? Sure. And I think we all experience dark times, and right. uh, it's just a matter of how do you get through those dark times, and sometimes you're in dark places and dark times. Uh, so right. to share your yeah. experience and how you got through the dark times and turn your life around, right. how you stayed positive through the, the, the challenging time you're facing, I think is inspirational to people, and that's why they're, they want to listen, yeah. because maybe they're experiencing a dark time, maybe they have a friend that's experiencing a dark time, and they right. need a little right. oomph, they need a little in, you know, inspiration to get through it. Uh, right. Because right. I think it's definitely easier to give up and throw in the towel, but uh, you've, yeah. you had something inside of you that kept you uh, moving forward and, and, stay, and find a, a silver lining of sorts until you finally were acquitted and your know, life was... Back to normal, but right. it's a long ten months that you had to fight that battle internally as well as externally. I, I, I'm sure. I did, man, and you know what I did was one. I write a lot of poems, you know, based around a lot of them. And one of them that I wrote, uh, I wrote one when I died. When, well, when I came back, and I feel like I'm living my second life right now. Hmm. Uh, it's called "Dead from Running." And it's, it's pretty short, so, you know, I can entertain your listeners with it real quick. Sure, help yourself. Um, doing a walk like shaking, feeling the art making, seeing a lot of people taking, talk on the phone to mom baking, concerned with life ranking, me and 11 are telling, book to see everyone reading, neighbors and friends are gathering, wake up to breakfast eating, English steam cup drinking, close to wear right dressing, Drive on road for church going. The dear thoughts are set calling. Not the mood I'll fight for winning. On this part in nature, moving. I feel to remember my thinking. Be not good with doing knocking. Devil found a way to get things rocking. Emotions run wild when listening on this dear. Get found me running. 
Very nice. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, you know, every now and then, like, uh, different pieces, uh, you know, I'll, I'll perform at uh, uh, a seminar or something. And, and um, I also lecture every now and then for one of the, the doctors at a college here called FBCU. Um, I talk with diverse um, students and I work with library in Peckham in, in London as well um, to do mentoring to the youth over there as well. That's fantastic. So yeah. let me, let's hit the last category because we're running short on time here. I think a couple minutes left. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You mentioned you're a video game developer, so I'm sure anyone that's yes, listening sir. that loves video games, plays video games, has kids that play video games, has relatives yes. love video games, they're all intrigued. How did you get involved with that? Uh, for me, you know, I, I I used to love playing arcade games when I was a kid, and uh, you know, I was always fascinated with games. And so when I when I got back into writing, a lot of the storyline that I wrote, I wanted to turn some of those storylines into gameplay. And so my second degree is gaming and simulation programming. Oh, really? Um, you know, so, yeah, so from learning, you know, C++ coding and, then, you know, learning to, to write in micro uh, of, um, uh, program, you know, to to write the different pseudo codes and uh, the different language, just to, it, it was fascinating to me what you can write on a computer and put it in a program and, and, and just watch the thing happen. And um, video game really helped me to understand how important maths is because mathematics, I can never mm -hmm. pronounce that word properly. But it's okay. It, it was just cool how I, you could see, you could do an equation, and that equation that you put in the code in, uh, would uh, determine, you know, if you're shooting a bullet or something or whatever it is, or you're doing a physical fighting with two characters, how that would impact those characters, you know? And sure. so I, I really was fascinated with it and I wanted to do video games myself. So right now I have Nostril Adventures that's uh, about 90% complete. Um, because I've been so busy, I've put off the last part of the load to... Uh, uh, some friends of mine that has this mobile gaming uh, LLC company in Orlando, and hmm. so they're finishing it up for me right now. How exciting! Uh, so that yes, so that game should be out in a in a in May. It'll be available on your website as well, and that will be up on my website. If people go on my website now, they'll kind of see like a brief, um, a brief, a brief on on the video game. Okay. And then if they go on my YouTube channel, uh, which is Cornell Bunting, um, one of my, I think my intro trailer uh, that I did, uh, they're just kind of telling people to subscribe to my channel. Uh, you can see a part of the gameplay in that video as well. Excellent. Yeah. How exciting. So it's, uh, yes, sir. So let me uh, get another summary real quick because we need to wrap up. Uh, again, my guest today is Cornell Bunting. He's a published author, public speaker, mentor, and we just talked about the video game he developed that will be available this summer. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, this yes, summer. Yes, Excellent. Yes. It can all be found yes. on his website, which is cornellbunting.com. And Cornell, yes. you have an incredible story. Uh, you're so well accomplished. I'm so honored and, and blessed to have you on the show today. And uh, yes, I want to you, thank you thank so much you. for being on the show. Yes, sir. Thank you for having me on the show. It was a pleasure, and uh, it was lovely talking with you. Yes, sir. Thank you so much. And you're watching and listening to the uh, Perky Collar Radio Show on WDRB Media. We'll see you next week.